What's up YouTube, Redbeard's Garage, and welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to be putting some performance parts on the Zircon 150. Now we've had this go-kart for quite a while. You might remember it when we broke the wheel off of it, or should I say Lonnie broke the wheel off of it back in the woods and we had to pull it out with the Odyssey. Now this go-kart's been running great. It does have a lot of valve rattle, so I want to adjust the valves, change the oil, put a new pair of brake pads on it, and then we got some performance parts from Go Power Sports. We went and got the Hammerhead stainless steel exhaust kit. The exhaust kit is super nice. I'm excited about putting it on there as well as a performance CDI. This should up the rev limiter and give it a little bit more power. We also have a broken uh, spark plug boot on our cool pack. So we're gonna be swapping that out too. And uh, should be a good little video. A lot of stuff to do on it. So let's jump right into it and we'll show you the parts on the workbench and get this thing done. So we got all the parts laid out here on the workbench. I'm pretty excited to do this because I wanna hear this 150 CC with an exhaust and uh, give it a little bit more power. Now the valves do need adjusted on this uh, Zircon. Those 150cc engines are bad about the valves coming out of adjustment. You need to do it about every six months to a year, depending on how much you ride the go-kart. My daughter's been riding this one quite a bit here lately, so I do want to get it in real good shape so we won't have any problems out of it because we don't want to be doing the engine swap on it right now with all of our other projects going on. So we went on Go Power Sports and we picked up the Uni air filter. And that also came with the little header that's gonna go from the carburetor to the air filter and it has a tab to bolt it all down to keep it all secure. And this is a really nice setup, a really nice piece of metal. Nothing's cheap in this. It also came with the, the new jets for the carburetor. Now, I don't know if we have to run these in our particular carburetor because it is a pre-jetted carburetor. It's been performance jetted, but I don't know if it's jetted enough to be running the air filter open. So I will have to contact Go Power Sports about that and make sure uh, we still need to use these jets, but we may not have to swap those out. We also went with the performance CDI just to get any more power that we can out of this 150cc. I do think the valves getting back in adjustment is going to make a big difference, but uh, this will help open up the rev limiter a little bit more and just get a little bit more power out of this 150. And of course, you can see the big item on the table. We got the stainless steel header as well as this comes with all the bolts you need and the hangers for the new muffler and also comes with this really nice large steel stainless steel and billet aluminum muffler now this is super high quality i didn't expect this muffler to weigh as much as it does but it's around 300 dollars, and i don't know if that comes with the air filter or not but i can see why it's priced so because this is twice or probably even three times the weight of those pit bike mufflers i've been running so it's definitely a quality muffler and i hope it's going to sound really good on that 150. We do need to do a little bit of maintenance on the 150cc, so we got some new brake pads that we're going to be installing. Uh, the ones on it look like they was pretty worn out, and also the a new cool pack because the spark plug head has been busted off of that 150. It was like that when we got it. So we're just going to put a new one on there just so it's got a good bite on the spark plug and keeps it protected from corrosion because uh, right now it's just pretty much an open piece of metal that slid right on the end of the spark plug. We are going to also be doing an oil change, uh, so we'll show you how to do that. Uh, you're going to use 30 weight, just straight 30 weight oil. I use Napa brand oil. It's bottled by Valvoline, so it's perfectly fine in my opinion to use. I even use their full synthetic in my Predators, so I always stick with uh, Napa. It's a real good oil. I've never had any problems. I love it. So we're going to use straight 30 weight oil in this 150cc. I know the oil is going to look horrible. We never changed it to begin with, and I'm sure the people that owned it before us never has changed it. So it's probably the original oil. So we're going to get it pulled out in front of the garage. So let's get to this. First, I'm going to start off with removing the air box so I can get in there to take the cool pack off. And as well, we won't be needing this air box anymore. So it's just a hose clamp on the carburetor. And there's a bolt right here uh, that was actually missing when we got this go-kart. So I'm going to be digging through my bolts and see if I can find that. There's also a vacuum line on this left-hand side of it. Just need to pop it off there. And this air box should slide out. Forgot to mention there's also a mounting tab on the back of these air boxes that mounts them to the engine back here. The bolt was also missing when we bought this go-kart. So to remove this cool pack, there's an eight millimeter nut and also a Phillips head screw. So we're gonna go ahead and 
remove this and slide the new one on we got that little eight millimeter nut off and we can slide the cool pack off and we can plug up our new one as you can see the cool pack only has two prongs on it so we're just going to unplug this original one and just swap out the wires now I can go ahead and slide the new cool pack onto the old stud and put that nut right back on there you go that new cool is all installed on there so you can see that old spark plug wire had the head broke off and we had actually just crimped it on the end of it and it's all rusty and corroded so that's not good for a good connection so we're going to remove this old wire we'll take the new boot and just plug it right onto that spark plug she's all connected and i'm probably going to zip tie this wire to the frame to keep it out of harm's way so we got that seat all pulled off it's just two bolts here in the back of these sliders there's no other bolts that hold this down as you can see you just got to get up under it and put a wrench i had to shove a flathead uh, in with the stud to keep it steel because i couldn't fit a socket down in the sliders of that seat but you can see now we have access to the valve cover and we're going to be a lot easier to get that exhaust header off so that'll be the next thing we do but we're also going to have to make a new bottom part to this seat this thing is completely rotted out as you can see and it's really uncomfortable you can see the woods all wet so i do have some plywood so we'll get a new piece of that cut and get a new piece of foam rewrap it with this old vinyl and screw that in uh, i don't know if we'll get to this today in this video but we will be doing this uh, soon so the exhaust header is held on by two 10 millimeter nuts we're just going to back those off with the other one i'm using a long extension and a ratchet to get in there kind of hard to get to just be easy and don't strip it out so we got both of those header bolts out you can see it's moving now now we have to move on to the other side to take the uh the mount off on the muffler you can see there's one mount right there and then this exhaust should slide right off this is a 13 millimeter nut that holds this muffler on you can see we got that all unbolted just gonna pull this bolt out of here now the whole exhaust system can be pulled out As you can see we have that header and old rusty muffler off there it also had like an egr system on it which is really weird but the new exhaust gets rid of this so we don't have to worry about none of this so this can go in the trash pile so next we got to put this little rubber spacer in the original spot where the the original exhaust hanger was and then this clamp will go around the muffler and slide onto there and clamp down so now i'm going to slide this new muffler into place it's kind of a tight fit but it's it's not too bad to get in there i'm going to go ahead and put the exhaust hanger on and put the nuts and washer that they provided with the kit on just to hold it all in place to help support that muffler clamp's got a little bit of tension on it so you have to kind of line everything up and get it the best you can now I'm not tightening this all the way up. I'm just putting enough tension on the nut so it won't come off and hold everything into place. And we're not gonna tighten this all the way down. We're just gonna get it snugged up and so we can align our muffler hanger on the rear and then we can torque everything down. This other one's really hard to get to. So I'm having to use the boxed inside of a wrench and just do it little bits at a time. So we got that hanger all lined up. All right, so we have that muffler hanger all installed. So now that muffler won't move anywhere. So now I'm just gonna wipe down this muffler and header really good because the grease from your hands can cause rust and burns on the stainless. So we got those header bolts all tightened up. Now we're gonna remove this valve cover and try to get the engine at top dead center so we can adjust those valves. We need to adjust them at two thousandths of an inch. Uh, so get you a filler gauge that is 0 0.002 and uh, get the engine at top dead center so there's no pressure on either valve and uh, we'll show you how to adjust those out 
Now the valve cover has four eight millimeters. We're gonna get taken out here. Now that valve cover can be pulled right off. Now you can see we have the intake valve and the exhaust valve located down here. Now this is an overhead cam set up, not like a Predator, which is a standard push rod engine. So we're gonna have to loosen this up, get our filler gauge and slide in there adjust this out to spec and then we should be good to put the valve cover back on and uh, do a little bit of riding so i'm going to put a nine millimeter wrench on the nut while holding the end of the we're just going to loosen that up so now we can take our two thousandths of an inch filler gauge slide in between the valve and the the connecting point loosen it up a bit until we can fit that in there so now I just loosen this up until I can get my two thousandths of an inch filler gauge in there and we're just going to tighten it up so we can slide this in and out without any grabs just like so now we're just going to lay our nine back on there hold the end still with our wrench tighten everything back down. Now we can take our filler gauge again and make sure it, it slides in and out with no grabs. Now that valve is adjusted. And after you get everything tightened down, you want to recheck it. Make sure that filler gauge is going to slide in and out without any grabbing. The CDI is located under this housing right here. This is just to keep water off all the electronics. So there's two Phillips head screws on the top of it. So we got that all unbolted. It was just pull up and out of the way. Okay. Now the CDI is located right there. It's simply unplug this one and plug the new one up. It's a little tab that you got to push out so we can unplug that harness. Same thing on the opposite side. Take a flathead, push the tab, unplug it, and there's our old CDI. Now with our new CDI, we just plug it right up. So with this performance CDI, it has this red wire coming out of it where the original one didn't. This needs to be hooked up to an accessory hot. So when the key is on, this needs to receive hot. So what I did was I tested all these wires and found that this harness laying right on the side of the engine on the left hand side, the black wire is actually hot with key. So I'm just going to tie this wire in to this black one and uh, we should be all good to start this thing and see how it runs. We still need to do the brakes and the oil change, but uh, I wanna make sure all these parts that we have put on is gonna perform correctly before we go any further. So I got that red wire from the CDI soldered in with this black one here and I put a piece of heat shrink around it. Now I'm gonna tape up everything and uh, we can see if she will fire with the new performance CDI and hammerhead exhaust. So now we're ready to put the little intake pipe on. This is kind of a pain to worm in there. Get it lined up on the carburetor. Seat it all the way on there. Now we can tighten down the hose clamp holding that neck onto the carb. Looks like it's on there pretty good. Now I'm gonna go find a bolt because this was missing and uh, this will hold this all in place. So let me go grab a bolt to put in here and we can slide our air filter on. So I went and found the Phillips head screw that will thread right into this little port here. Go ahead and get it tightened all down. Now we're getting this air filter tightened down on here. I haven't oiled this filter. You really need to oil them because it keeps that fine dust from going inside the carb and clogging up your jets. We should be ready to start this thing. So just to recap, we've put a new cool pack on, a performance CDI, the hammerhead performance exhaust, and uh, adjusted those valves out. Now, I wanted to give it a test fire to see uh, if she'll start. exhaust does sound really good it seems like it revs a lot better and you don't hear that valve rattle that we had before so uh, make sure to keep these valves adjusted at two thousandths of an inch uh, you'll have to find a uh, napa usually carries filler gauges that'll go down to that but there'll also be links in the description below where you can find all these parts as well as filler gauges and a few other specialty tools that you do need 
So now the last thing we have to do is change the oil and throw the seat back on and we can go take it for an old rip snot and see how she does. I am excited because it seems like it revs a little bit better. So let's get that oil changed. So on the left hand side of the motor, there's like this uh, hanger here. This is for a different style go-kart to mount the engine. If you look towards the back of the engine, you'll see a 17 millimeter nut or bolt. You need to remove it to drain the oil. And I've never changed this oil. So I'm guessing it's gonna be pretty rough. Now this oil is probably gonna shoot out like a rocket. Okay. I did drop my bolt down into the oil. So as I stated before, we're gonna use straight 30 weight oil. That's what Go Power Sports recommends in these 150s. You have a little oil fill tab right here on the side of the engine where the flywheel is, uh, pretty much right under the air filter. And it takes 28 ounces of oil. A quart is 32 ounces, so just leave four ounces in there. I'm using this little head you can buy at a parts store so I can get down in there and add my oil. Now on the brake caliper, you have two 10 millimeter bolts. One's up top and one is down bottom. We just gotta remove those and we can pull this whole caliper mount out and uh, swap those pads out. So I actually just noticed that the pads that we had got from Go Power Sports, we got the wrong ones. Uh, they're like twice as wide as these. So we won't be able to do the brake change today, but we'll do them in a later video. You do feel a little bit more power. It definitely picks up out of the hole with a little bit more power, but uh, it's a fun go-kart. These 150s don't have like a crazy amount of power, but the power they do have, they put to the ground really nice. And I like this go-kart quite a bit. So I'll throw a Growth Pro on and take you a couple laps around the house. Oh gosh. So I don't know if you can tell in the video, I didn't do it before and after ride, should have, but I didn't. Uh, but the thing does run a lot better. We got it out on the road after uh, the video was done shot 
and I'm telling you the thing performs so much better on the highway I did think it had a warped axle before but it, it doesn't I guess the the new tires fix that wobble problem but if you want to find these products for your 150 all the links will be in the description below make sure to go to go power sports and check out all these awesome parts this exhaust really sounded awesome this thing it performs a lot better and you might have noticed about flipped or uh got it up on two wheels but was able to work it back out of there and uh uh, we was all fine. We're okay. Now I'm going to have to put a new seat on this go-kart. It's rotted completely out the back part, the butt part. It's really uncomfortable to ride if you ride it for more than five minutes. So I'm going to see if Go Power Sports has a seat. And if they don't, I'm probably just going to cut a new piece of plywood and gut the seat out and repair it so we can have a nice comfortable seat on that thing. These 150s are really fun go-karts. I really recommend them if you can find them. Uh, cheap. They're, they're pretty expensive around where I live. They're usually around $1,000 used. So uh, if you can find one for a thousand or under, they're really nice go karts. They probably got the same power as a as a Predator 212, uh, but the torque converters handle the power a lot better. It's like uh, they take off a lot better. I mean, you can take off spinning and keep it sideways around the house on some parts. Where when we had Aubrey's old two seater go kart, my daughter's old go kart, it wouldn't do that. So you can tell it puts the power to the ground really nice. There will be some later upgrades to this go kart, but for now, I think it runs awesome. We're just going to ride it and have fun on it. We are going to take it to a big set of woods around my house and do a big ride video because I know we've been slacking on, on enjoying the stuff that we're building. So look out for that. But make sure to go check out Go Power Sports and use that discount code REDBEARD to uh, save on all your go-kart parts. And check the links out in the description below where you can find other stuff like the lash gauges uh, to set the valves and... Uh, that helps us out too if you buy the products we're promoting on Amazon. It, it just helps us to be able to keep producing videos for you guys. Don't forget to go like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram where you'll get the inside scoops to all of our projects around here. You'll know what's going to come out uh, before they pop up on YouTube. And hang out with us on our live stream and ask us some questions or uh, just come spend some time with us. But guys, always come back to Redbeard's Garage and I'm out.